Hi, I'm Bill Rennie. I'm so excited to be here. This is the introduction to deaf idioms. What exactly does that mean? Well, the deaf have their own way of expressing their language. It's the same as the hearing using slang. For example, in English, the hearing would say, that is so cool. And the deaf, they have one too. What is that? That is so cool. By the way, if you prefer not to have voice on the tape, you can just hit that mute button. I really want to encourage you to learn and to practice these deaf idioms on the tape again and again. That'll really improve those receptive skills. I'm going to teach you 10 deaf idioms. Some of them will have two different meanings. Included will be English and examples, storytelling, and a touch of comedy. I'm sure that this will be a valuable learning experience. Now, are you ready? Let's go for deaf idioms. Number one. Perfect. Did you see the English number one? The hearing have three different sayings. How can it be? How is it possible? How can you do that? The deaf, what do they do? Ooh, how can you do that? Remember, expression and feeling. It's very important to show. Some people think it's, ooh, you're really gross or terrible or sick, really ugly. You have to show your feeling and your expression. It's very important. This kind of expression, and you use an F hand that bounces on your chin, and then you point to what's happening. Not with an expression like this. No, not like that, but like this. I'd like to tell a story. A father and a son go out fishing, and it's a beautiful lake, and they're sitting next to each other, and the little boy finds a can of worms, and he's digging around in it, and oh, he's getting out, oh, a big one, and it's kind of hard to get out of there, but oh, he finally gets it out and puts it on his hook, and it's moving all over the place, and throws that line into the water, and the water spreads out, and he's just sitting there waiting, and Oh, his hand's all dirty. He starts wiping it on his shirt and licking his fingers. And the father looks at him and he goes, Oh, how can you do that? Oh, it's no big deal, Dad. Oh, yuck. Then the second story, I'm driving along and I pull over and get out of my car. And a man comes up towards me and he's dressed just filthy. Oh, he's the smell and... He walks up to this garbage can, he opens it up, and there's food and stuff and cans, and oh, there's all this terrible stink coming from this can, and oh, how can he live like that? Now, number one, B. It's a little bit similar to the first sign. Let me explain. The English for this one, first one, very, very skilled. Next one, expert. He really, really knows what he's doing. The deaf, the way they sign it, wow, he's really good. Now my story, and there's a, a boy that comes and sits down at a computer, kind of a nerdy guy with tape on his glasses and kind of buck teeth, and he's working on the computer, puts in his little disc, and he's taking the computer apart, and he puts it all back together again, and he's typing on this thing, and oh, I looked at him, and I just go, wow, he really knows what he's doing. Then the next story, there's a guy that comes up and 
Ooh, he's really a kind of a big guy playing basketball, and he gets those baskets in every time. Wow. He is really skilled at that. And let me explain the expression. It's really important that your expression shows the feeling, wow. Wow, he's really good. Wow. Okay. Now, the next one, English number two. Now, number two, the English, we have, oops, I was wrong, I'm so embarrassed, and I should have known better. And the deaf, they sign, oops, take the five hand in front of your throat and close it to an S, not out this way, but toward your neck, and your expression your shoulders are kind of up, a little stiff, and you go like that. You're showing a feeling of surprise or shock or real embarrassment. For example, like my wife and I, we're sitting next to each other driving along and come to a stop and I'm going to go left and she says, no, you have to go right. And I said, no, I'm going left. And we argue back and forth and finally she gives up. I go left. And we're driving along, and all of a sudden, we see the place, and I said, huh, aren't you a little embarrassed? She goes, oops, I was wrong. Another example, this deaf guy, he's kind of a bragger about how good he is at bowling. He comes up to me, and he, we're talking, and he says, I'm going to challenge you to this bowling. And I said, okay, let's go. So we go over there, and I get all strikes, and he gets some spares and some strikes. He misses some. And he's bowling, and he looks over at me and all my strikes, and whoops, I guess I'm a little embarrassed. Now, we're moving on to number three. The English for number three. Ooh, there's like five of them. Overlooked, missed, hidden, didn't see it, and didn't recognize it. The deaf, they sign it like this. Kind of a flat palm over the front of your face. Sometimes your lips like, are like this. Sometimes maybe they're opened. Don't go slowly like this. You need more speed, like an airplane going across your face. Okay? Now the example. My keys were on the table, but I couldn't find them, and I was looking all over for them all day, going through my drawers and my pocket, did I leave them in my car? I was looking all over the place. Finally, I was blaming my wife. Where are my keys? They're right there. Where? In your pocket. Oh, my gosh. I didn't see them there. Another example. A woman, she's uh, at work typing, and she's looking all over for her glasses. Where are my glasses? Finally, she decides to go into her boss's meeting all these people are around. She says, excuse me, have you seen my glasses? Yes, I've seen them. Where? Where are they? They're on top of your head. Oh my gosh, I didn't know they were there. The English for number 3B is next. Of course, this is almost the same sign. The expression, a little bit different with the mouth open. The English, I didn't know something about someone. The deaf sign it like this. And it shows that um, their feeling is, it's like it's just not possible. 
The example, I went to Las Vegas and I was sitting down at the slot machine and I was putting my coins in, cranking that arm all day and all of a sudden a man came up next to me, sat down, yeah, he had a drink and kind of a big guy, tall, black man. He was very nice looking, but he kept bumping into me. I kept playing my slot machine, but finally he left and somebody came up behind me and tapped me. Did you know that was OJ? You know, he plays football? That was him. What? Really? I didn't know that was him. Another example? Some deaf people all got together, uh, some bowling people, and they were meeting a lot of people. A man came up to me. I didn't know who he was. I introduced myself, and we chatted for a while. And I thought, no, nah, he's not very important. So I moved on. Someone informed me that, did you know that that was the president of the bowling league? Really? I didn't know that about him. Now we move on to number four. The English for number four, that's risky and too dangerous. The deaf, how do they sign it? Not like this, but it's your palm facing towards you and you wiggle your fingers a little. Your expression is like this, shows that you're really scared, like you uh, can't afford to take that risk. Now for the example, my friend and I, we were going together up to the mountains and he was driving. He puts his knee up on the steering wheel and we're chatting and the steering wheel is kind of being st steered by his leg and oh my gosh, it was so nerve wracking. There was a cliff right around there and we're swerving back and forth and we're skidding around and Oh my gosh, ah, oh, that is so dangerous. Another example, a woman, she's learning how to ski. It's snowing in the mountains and she gets on the chairlift and rides up and she gets off and she plows down the hill, a little awkward at first. Then she gets on again and she rides up and Oh my gosh, it keeps going and going and she looks down and it keeps going up and gosh, it just keeps going and her heart starts beating. She gets off and she looks down and oh my gosh, it's so far down there. I'm so nervous. Oh, it's so risky. The English for number five is next. Now the English for five, eavesdrop, or listening in on someone else's conversation. The deaf, they sign it like this. Your hand is shaped like this. There's a B hand and then bend it over a little bit, and your mouth is open just a little bit. It shows excitement, curiosity, surprise. The example, uh, the deaf come to a deaf club meeting and one woman, she goes into the restroom and opens the door and there's two women sitting there talking back and forth about their husbands and problems about owing $2,000. The woman comes in and looks and eavesdrops on their conversation, hightails it out and spreads the word. Another example, my wife and I, we go out to dinner and we're sitting across from each other. We open up the menu and we're getting ready to order and we're chit-chatting and all of a sudden two deaf people walk in. They sit right across from us and they're chit-chatting and talking away and we're looking over there 
and eavesdropping on their conversation. Now we move on to which one? 5B. Now the English for number 5B, to gobble up, to use a lot of, and to use up so fast. And the deaf, the way they sign it, really fast, all the way back. And your expression shows like you can't believe it can't believe how fast somebody ate something, that it was gone so fast. Now the example, a mother was cooking uh, dinner one night and she had this big platter of food and she walks out to the uh, room with the table in it and it has meatloaf on it and mashed potatoes and corn on the cob with butter, salad, all on this beautiful platter. And uh, she remembered that she forgot the plates and the forks and everything, so she goes back and all of a sudden her son, he's about 12 years old, he arrives home um, after football practice and he comes in and notices this big tray of food on the table and he looks around and starts eating it and eating it and eating it and Mom comes out and she says, oh, and he's looking the plate and she goes, you ate all that up? Another example, a father and daughter were um, discussing something and he, the dad decided he wanted to give her a new car. So the two of them went out to look around and um, the daughter saw one that she really wanted. It's a, it was a small little car nice little thing. It was real cute. And the father said, no, no, it's too small. Oh, it's kind of dangerous, you know. A truck, you know, if a truck came by in the traffic, man, this big truck would come by this little dinky car. Uh, that's, you know, you'd have to be really careful of the big trucks. You know, you need a big car that's really strong and comfortable. I'd like to buy that for you. And the daughter said, hmm, I don't know. You know, a big car, the gas, eats it all up really fast. Now, number six. Number six, I'm better than you, I beat you, more than or greater than. And the deaf, the way they sign it, is very simple. It's like an S to an H hand and shoot it out. And the expression, of course, is important. It shows... Uh, that you won, that I'm the best, I beat you. Now an example, a long time ago, one summer, one little girl who had pigtails and a little boy who had a lollipop, they were about five years old or so, the little girl said, hey, you want to race up to the tree on the hill there? And see who wins first? I'll challenge you. Okay. One, two, three, go. So away they went and they were racing up this hill and touched the tree. And the little boy still licking his lollipop. And the girl said, I beat you. Another example. One time at summer camp, 
a group of girls were in their canoe and the boys were in another canoe and it was a competition they were racing to the line so away they went go and they were paddling and going up and down down the falls and around the bends and all over the water and they were neck and neck coming down to the to the line and the boys won and the boys group was so excited they were all getting out of their boat and they looked over at the girls and they said, hey, we beat you, we beat you. And the girls group, they looked over from their boat, said, oh, man, those boys, they think they're better than we are. But next year, we'll plan to beat them. So you see, you can use it directionally, towards you or away from you. Okay? Now, the next one, number seven. Now, the English for number seven, it's about four of them. You didn't get my point. You didn't understand me. I didn't mean that. It's not what I said. And the deaf, the way they sign it, open your mouth and close it and use your number one hand. Now the example uh, a teacher was teaching sign class and one of his students was really motivated, learning a lot. And the teacher wanted to show the sign, I love you. I love you. And the student, oh, oh my gosh, oh, really? Oh, I love you too. What? The teacher said, oh, no, I didn't mean that. And another example, my friend and I, we went out to eat, and we were sitting across from each other, and we ordered a hamburger and a Coke, and uh, waited for a while, and the waitress brought spaghetti and milk. And I go, that's not what I meant. And now the next, number 7B. Now the English for number 7B, shut up, don't say a word, and the deaf, the way they sign it, shut up, and your expression shows that you're upset, that you're tired of it, that you can't stand it anymore, that's the way you feel, and that's the way your expression shows, kind of a squatty face. Shut up. Now for the example, at school there were some children and the teacher was uh, standing up in front. There were five children, four girls and one boy. They were teasing back and forth and the boy was really upset. They were arguing back and forth. And so the teacher decided that she's going to change the way that they dress. The four girls, all of them, are going to wear boys' clothes. And the boy, he's going to have to dress like a girl in a little dress. So there were, so here was the little boy dressed in this dress. Oh, boy. And the girls all looked at him, and they were all dressed in, uh, in the the boys clothes and the guy said oh you sure look cute oh he said shut up and now 
the English for number eight. Now the English for number eight. Not far from here. Really close. And the deaf sign like this. It's an F hand and it's close to your nose, sometimes on your chin. And your expression is like this, showing your teeth and you sweep down off of your nose or your chin. When it's really close, you're more stiff. Show your, more of your teeth. That means it's really close. Not too far. Kind of pucker your lips. It's over there. It's important, for example, the place it's really close to there. Okay, now I'm going to show you the examples. At my school in Pittsburgh, I always played uh, baseball, or it was really close to the Pittsburgh Pirates. I used to go there all the time, once a week. A little group of us would go and watch, we'd eat popcorn and Oh, it was really excited. All of the school. It was really close to the school. Another example. My friend lives in New York City. And I used to fly there often. Why? To shoot pictures of New York, of the skyscrapers. And I used to love taking pictures there. And also the Statue of Liberty. I was just fascinated with that and taking all these pictures of her. It was very beautiful. All of the ornateness of her and her crown and her standing there with her statue. I loved taking pictures. It was beautiful. So I arrived there at my friend's uh, house and uh, was taking all these pictures of Statue of Liberty of New York City. And my friend said, really? You went to the Statue of Liberty? You've been there? Oh, yeah. Haven't you been there? No, not yet. I've never been there. What? It's so close. And now, English for the number nine. And now the English for 9A. There's three of them. Really good at it, can handle it, and confident of skill. And the way the deaf sign it, like this. Make sure that you show a feeling of, uh, like when you get a new car, and you feel really proud about that or that you are successful at your new job, like you're really good at it. That's how your expression shows. It's a five to an S hand underneath the chin and goes quickly. Make sure that your body is kind of stiff. Maybe cock your head a little bit. Sometimes you do that. Your lips can be kind of puckered casual, or if you stick your tongue out a little, then it means you're really proud. And now for my example, one day at the hospital, there was a, a pregnant deaf lady. She was having so much pain, and she was waiting and waiting for the interpreter. Finally, the interpreter came. What happened? Oh, I'm sorry. There was so much traffic. I'm sorry I'm late. Let's go ahead. So there was a discussion, and the doctor came in, and they were talking back and forth. The interpreter was interpreting, and it was really great because there was no misunderstanding. Everything went so well. It was perfect. And the deaf lady 
said to the interpreter, where did you learn sign? Oh, I learned sign in class from the sign language factory. You know, that's Bill Rennie. Oh, yeah, I know him. Wow, you sign really great, just like a deaf person. Oh, well, thanks a lot. Thanks so much for helping me. Oh, hey, no problem. I was help happy to help you. Bye-bye. And the interpreter turned to left, leave, and she was thinking, wow, I'm pretty good. And then the next example, my friend and I were driving. Um, it was really a cold winter's night. We were going to go uh, skiing, and it was snowing really bad, really icy on the road. And we started to skid and swerve around, and I was driving, and oh my gosh, we were just going all over the place. And we turned around, and the wheel was just kind of gliding all over the place. And we skidded around and around and around, and going up and down these hills, and up and down and back and forth. And my friend is sitting next to me, and he's going, oh my gosh, how can you do this? Oh, no problem. I can handle it. And now, for the next one, the English for which one? 9B. The English for 9B, there's four of them, wow. The English for number one, the first one, I'm really, really tired of it, bored with it, dull, or used to it. And the way the deaf sign it, just one sign, what is it? Like this. Again, the five to the S hand underneath the chin but done slowly, kind of in a curved motion. It's done really slowly. And your feeling is kind of like a sigh, like you're tired. Your shoulders kind of hunch a little. You're just bored with it. Now for an example, Oh, I used to love to eat pizza. Oh, I just loved it. I would eat it every night. Now, I'm really bored with it. And another example, I was learning how to dance. I was taking classes, cowboy dancing. whirling around, getting really into it. I was really good at it. But now, I kept going and going. Oh, now I'm really tired of it. I would be sitting at a table and a woman would come up to me and, hey, come on, you're really a great dancer. Let's go. Oh, no, I don't want to dance. I'm really tired of it. And now, the English for number 10. The English for number 10, and this is our last one, run errands, shop around, and many, many things to do. And the deaf, how do they sign it? Like this. You see how the lips are pursed together? That's just kind of the casual way, just with, you know, a few things to do, very simple. But if the open mouth, that means that it's really a big job, many things to do. For example, my wife, 
She cooks all day with her Polish traditional food. She invites uh, her parents, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, kids. All of them come together. And I just sit and watch basketball. My wife, she's in the kitchen just doing all these things, getting all kinds of help with potatoes, mashing potatoes, peeling potatoes, chopping cabbage, many, many things to do. Another example, the deaf hosted a basketball tournament and for two years they planned and planned. They reserved the hotel, did all the scheduling and calling, contacted all the people, big list of things to do. So many things to do. Wow. Well, I guess that concludes the deaf idioms. I really enjoyed it. I want to thank you for your motivation in learning deaf idioms. You can look forward to more and more videos produced by the Sign Language Factory. Thanks again. See you later.